this morning for our class. We're running just a little bit behind, but we'll get going here. With uh, This will be, as I had said last week, the last class that um, we're going to talk about the idea of the prayers of Paul. And so... I want to think about some of the things that are in this lesson. Last week we looked at the idea of, of prayers of petition for understanding. Um, the one that we didn't touch on that we will touch on this week is prayers of petition for service. And what Paul talks about there in several different ways with that. Uh, and we'll just wrap up a few final thoughts about the study in general. Uh, if you recall last week I had said next Sunday, which is the 24th, uh, we'll have a, a guest speaker in the morning, and he will teach class as well. It's uh, Stephen Matthews, Nathan Matthews' older brother, who is um, an evangelist in Virginia right now. He's going to be with us and visiting here, and he's going to teach the class and, and also preach that morning. And then the 31st, uh, December 31st, will actually begin our new quarter, the first quarter of 2018. It's just the way the Sundays fell. Um, so we'll have new class material uh, for that, about holiness, that'll be out in the foyer uh, as well. And just before I forget to mention it, at the end of class, we're, as we run out of time, um, Stephen has some material for the class he's going to teach next week. I don't think it's out there yet, but I'll try to get it out there yet today. So if you look before you leave, uh, or on Wednesday night, the, the material for next Sunday morning's class will be out there um, where the class material normally is in the foyer. So with that said, let's have a word of prayer, and then we'll begin with our, our study this morning. Our good and gracious Father, we're so thankful to you to be able to come together this morning to worship you in this way, to have this time and place to, to come without distraction and, and think about the things that you would have us to do and who you would have us to be. We're grateful, Father, for the way that you have revealed your word to us. We pray for our understanding, and we pray that you would help us to see the opportunities that exist, not just here, but with our brethren all over this earth you have created. Opportunities to do good, to teach your word, to expand your kingdom, and to show to the world who, who you are and who our Savior is. We pray that you would be with those in difficult places, especially as they strive to maintain the message of the gospel and to take it to others. We pray for their strength and for their opportunities. We pray that you would be with us here in the area that we're in, that we can have doors that are open to be able to take your word to different places. We pray that you would bless us in those things, and we ask for wisdom to use them in ways that bring glory to you and that draw others to you. Thank you, Father, for the confidence we have in you and that we can come before you this way in prayer, that we can call you our Father, and that as your children we know that you will hear us. Please be with many are on our minds this morning that are suffering the difficulties of this life. We pray for their strength and their comfort and that they would see your power in, in their lives. We thank you for all that we have through our Savior, Jesus Christ, and we come to you this morning in his blessed name. Amen. So uh, I thought this was a, you know, this part of the study was laid out well and that this is the one we're going to, to end on the idea of petitions for service. And as you start to, to think about that a lot, you know, the, one of the things that the writer says in the beginning of this lesson, it's lesson 12, if you picked up both of them out there, um, he says that too much of our time in our Christian lives, we consider the tasks that God has set before us and forget the help that God promises as we struggle um, to fulfill his di desires for our life in Christianity. And that's true, but, and, and also sometimes I think we become very focused, as we've talked about throughout this lesson in our prayers, about praying just for ourselves and some of the, what I have uh, called selfish things that we want. And selfish doesn't necessarily have to be a bad term, it just means that we're self-focused when we're praying for, for some things. Um, it can be it can be bad if, we, if that's all our focus is and we never look outside of ourselves. But, you know, God teaches us to ask for help for ourselves in different ways. But one thing I hope that you have been able to see throughout this study is how often Paul prayed for other people and for other things and prayed for things that sometimes we don't often think 
um, to pray about. And that's, that's what I want us to be able to see even in this lesson today. And so to, to kind of get us going that way, think about this idea of praying for, he says, petitions for service. Remember, petition is going to God on behalf of someone else or something else um, uh, in general. And that's what we wanted to think about. So when you consider that, just I find it helpful to make things real in looking at what's around us and then trying to to make sure that we're making spiritual applications to that as we go through our lives. So, let me ask this question. Do you ever wish for or think about an opportunity for others? Whether it's at work or at school, um, depending on where, where you are in life. You know, do, you ever, do you ever think about that? Can you think of any examples of, of that? When that might happen? Yeah. Every day I look out my window and I see all these houses around, uh-huh. and I've never spoke to any of them okay. about the Lord. Sure. So I took some bulletins and I thought, this is my opportunity. I'll mm-hmm. just go around each one of those houses and hand out <coughs> okay. and invite them. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah so, an opportunity. Sure, there's a spiritual opportunity. Um, think, think about this. When, when you, you know, let's, let's, let's focus on one part of this for just a moment and, and make an application. So you're at work, you work, for, you work for a company, and, you know, whatever it is that it does, whether it's in the financial field, insurance field, medical field, you know, technological field, whatever it is, um, you know, you hope... I would guess that you hope that your company is going to be successful because if the company is successful, you're going to be <laughs> well rewarded or, su- or succeed, right? And so if you, as you hear about things that, that your company or that your, your office or whatever it is may do or, or has an opportunity to do, I mean, do you, do you hope that those things happen? Do you wish for those things to happen sometimes in a positive way? Everybody go like this. <laughs> All right, we, that, that, that's what we look towards. You know, the, the company I work for, when I hear about, you know, hey, we've just acquired, uh, you know, this particular manufacturer. We, we have a lot of manufacturers that we acquire. We've acquired this manufacturer. That means we're going to be able now to offer this service that our competitors didn't, uh, used to have ex- exclusivity on. That's good for, that's good for me. That's good for us. And so I look at that and I think, well, that's good. And so, when the company may ask me to do something for that, when I'm going out and talking to, to these people or to this architect or, or whatever it is, hey, you know, mention that. Mention we can do that now. Mention the, you know, that that's part of who we are. And so there's something for me to do to help the greater good, right? So I think we all understand that. And, and you think about those opportunities that exist in a secular sense. You know, we try to do those things, Right. Paul, did you have something? Yeah, I was just thinking along the lines of your speaking about, sometimes in our prayer life, Mm -hmm. we are concerned with so much like here and now, Mm -hmm. instead of banking on the future a little bit. Lord, Lord, help us down the road to see brighter lights and take in everything we can Mm -hmm. can do to help others. And I mean, futuristic plans, not just here and now. Yeah. Yeah, and that's where that's what I want us to start thinking about for just a moment. You know, the follow-up question here, you know, what about, you know, a good opportunity for, for, for spelling error there, you company, your company or family that you aren't directly involved in? I've kind of morphed that into what we've been talking about. There may be things that come up that I'm a part of, that I'm trying to, to promote and to help, whether it's at school or work. And there may be things that the company's doing that I'm really not a part of, but I'm I'm hopeful for them. I'm wishing for them. I want to, to do something to help that effort because, in general, it's going to, to help me. It's going to help things be successful. We understand that in a secular sense, right? Um, and, and it may not just be a company. Maybe it's your family. Maybe, you know, as you have kids or grandkids that are grown or growing and they're out and they have opportunities that you're not directly a part of or that you can't directly control, but you want the best for them in that opportunity, and so you're thinking about that, or you're praying about that, hopefully, or you're, you're doing something to help that in the future. That's something that we do. We think about that, especially when it comes to maybe our family or our future, and we consider things like that. So 
What do you do or what part do you take in those secular opportunities to help them along? You know, I mentioned a couple of them. Maybe, you know, maybe I make an extra effort when I'm in a particular office to, to mention or to promote this, this new company that we have acquired because I want the company to do well with that. Maybe, you know, in, in your field, whatever it might be, you, you do something that you don't normally do or you go beyond what is your actual real responsibility in order to have some advantage for your company or for your school or for your family. Everybody kind of understand that and, and, and see how that works in life. So in comparison, how important are spiritual opportunities compared to those secular ones? What do you think? Much greater. Thank you. I need to look that direction more. <laughs> right. Much greater. Much more important. Much more life-changing. The longer view of things is that we're, that we're, Peter says we are here as pilgrims. This is not where we're going to stay. We're headed for something bigger, for something greater. And those things are things we should be focused on then, right? And so my point about this little you know, quick exercise as we got started this morning is, you know, I, it, it's, it's relevant to me and I think it would be relevant to several of you knowing what you do or what you're involved in, whether school or your careers or your family life. You see things that are down the road. You see things that are happening. You want to be involved in promoting those and helping those for your career or for your kids or for your education. And you think about those things and you kind of, you deal with those things outside of just yourself and what happens to you every day because you want them to be successful. So think about that in a spiritual sense. That's one of the things that's being talked about here that Paul we see Paul praying for, both for his work and for work, the work of others, because that's something that's a big concern of his. And that's one thing that we want to try to be focused on, as we think about how we pray and mimicking the prayers of, of Paul or imitating those things. Part of it is understanding how to go outside of ourselves when we maybe sit down at night and pray to God and, and we ask him about we may pray to him about our health or, about our, or ask him for wisdom or we may ask him for opportunity. We may talk to him about struggles that we're having for ourselves or for our kids or for our family. We may, we may pray for, for strength to get through difficult situations and all those things are things that we should bring to our father as his children. But I encourage you to step outside of that sometimes and think about what's happening in the kingdom of God throughout the world. That's what Paul was doing. And that's what we want to do sometimes, is look at the greater purpose that we're living for and the greater purpose of God and pray for those things. A lot of times those things get mentioned in a prayer, maybe here in the assembly, um, maybe especially when we're thinking about our giving, and, and we put up the screen behind us of where some of the money that we have goes to different places and that they deal with difficulties, and you know, we send them some, we send them a money, we send them a check uh, a few times a year to, to help with that and be a part of that work. And sometimes that's where that stops. And think about how Paul prayed for these other things and, and, and what we can do with that. Look at some of these passages. Uh, Ephesians chapter 6 is one of them that was in the lesson. Ephesians 6 and verse 18. And, and Paul doesn't get real specific here, but look at the ideas in the, in, that he puts forth in, in thinking about these things. Let's do that together here. Ephesians 6 and verse 18. He says, as, as he's drawing this letter to a close in chapter 6, he says, Praying at all times in the Spirit with all prayer and supplication. To that end, keep alert with all perseverance, making supplication for all the saints, and also for me that words may be given to me in opening my mouth boldly to proclaim the mystery of the gospel for which I am an ambassador in change, that I may declare it boldly as I ought to speak. So, while Paul reflects on himself in this passage, he does so in the context of a much greater purpose. 
And, and I think that's one of the things that we want to point out there. When he says, keep alert with all perseverance, making supplication for all the saints and also for me. So those two things are put together. And what does he want them to pray for? That words might be given, that, the boldness of, or that with boldness he might proclaim the mystery of God. So how would that relate to how we might pray today? You think about, you think about the world situation then, you think about the world situation now. How can we pray for some of these same things that Paul is praying for? What do you think about that? Look, yeah. Maybe, maybe not just boldly, but looking for the, the opening in yeah. the conversation. Okay. Okay. Something to say to get to open the conversation without just jumping in mm -hmm. to get them thinking about it. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's a good I think that's something that's good to think about because um, you know, if you have any dealings with, you know, the business of dealing with people, um, how you say something or the right opportunity to say something has an immense amount of influence on how successful you are with it. Um, you know, I can, I can walk up to you in, in the midst of a crowd uh, when you're talking to somebody else and say something to you that's maybe true and right and good or something that you should do or should think about. And it have very little impact on you because of how and when I did it versus seeking the right opportunity. And that's one of the things that Paul's looking for is opportunity uh, and asking for that opportunity. So let's think about that as far as our personal lives and our congregational lives go. Praying for those types of opportunities and looking for those types of things where we can take advantage of, uh, you know, using the knowledge God has given us to to spread the word or to, to be a part of something bigger. John? Well, Paul was an ultimate example of an ambassador. Yeah. He knew how to yeah. tailor his speech for the recipient. He spoke to Jews a certain way. He spoke to Greeks yeah. a certain way. And not because of him, but because of God and the gospel. Mm -hmm. And we need to look at it the same way, and we need to ask for those blessings as well. Yeah. To have the wherewithal to know how to speak to a particular individual about what they need to hear. Yeah, I think that, that, that's, a good, that's a good way to put it. Um, you know, this, this section talks about, you know, petitions for service. Paul is looking for opportunities to serve. And he's, he's asking others to pray for that, and he's praying for that. That's something for, for us to consider. You know, as you go to God in prayer, whether it's individually or as, as we do here together sometimes, are we praying for and seeking opportunities to serve outside of just ourselves like we find here? And, the, and rather than just mentioning it, this is what I, what I want you to think about or, or concentrate on, rather than just mentioning it, in an assembly like this, and, and whoever's leading the prayer mentions it, think about how you sit down and pray personally, earnestly, how sometimes you bring entreaties to God about something that's, that's very important to you. Maybe it's just a personal struggle, maybe it's with a relationship or with a health issue, whatever it is. Think about how that you may go to God several times a day about a particular thing and ask him for that. Have you thought about taking the opportunity to concentrate on something like this? And several times a day, going to God and praying for others, petitioning Him for others in the respect of the service that they're trying to do or looking for opportunities. You know, we've mentioned in a couple of different classes throughout the course of this year the idea of, of trying to help those who. Are, that we support financially. Uh, I think it was in the zeal class that we had um, talking about, you know, how can we do that? How can we be involved with those works that are abroad more than just we send them money? I mean, we send them money and that's helpful. They need that to be able to do the things that they need to do. But there were a couple of different things that, that came out of that class about, you know, 
sending them emails or communicating with them personally, encouraging them in that work that they're doing, encouraging them not to give up despite the difficulties and the hardships and the distractions that, that come, um, reaching out to them or, or reaching out to them personally or offering prayers for those people personally and telling them, I have prayed for you about this and this and this. I mean, can you imagine if you were struggling with something or you're in a difficult situation and you get some sort of communication from somebody that you really don't know that well and say, you know, and someone who was diligent enough to maybe look up your area and recognize that, you know, there's this particular tribe or clan or, or government that is oppressing certain people in this area and research that and pray specifically for that and then you send them a communication and say look i realize you're dealing with this particular thing that's happening in in africa right now or in the philippines or wherever and i have prayed i have come before god on your behalf that this might happen and that this might happen and that this might happen can you imagine how encouraging that would be to someone in that specific situation that's what we see paul doing and that's what we want to think about, when we the idea of, pre- of petitioning him for service, you know, for ourselves, but also for others as well. Yeah, Paul? Yeah, I, here, oh, I don't know, it's been a couple of years now, I run into a preacher down in the Philippines on the internet. Okay. And we have become, and sometimes we pray for doors of opportunities. Mm-hmm. But I wonder if we pray for the courage and the strength, if we find these doors of opportunity, to open them. Right. I mean, we're always saying, give us doors of opportunity. Yeah. Well, make sure and help us with the courage and strength sure. to open these doors and make something of them. Yeah. So we've become email friends and doing the tsunami. They had a somewhat of a tsunami down there with all them torrential. He sent me a picture with the whole clan of the church family saying we made it through you know yeah. and it's been it's it's been good when you pray for things like that and things happen why you know yeah. reach out i yeah. mean it's good to know that we send money but they want to hear they want to hear somewhat a voice which was the voice at the end of your fingers mm-hmm. you know yeah. so they can feel like this works yeah that's and that's, that's what, what I want to encourage you to think about and what we see here. Look at this verse here in Colossians. And, and Paul speaks to, to some of that point. He says, continue steadfastly in prayer. And, you know, just you, you think about that for a minute, that word steadfastly. Um, you know, these are inspired words of Paul, and we've translated them to the best of our ability. But think about how he was inspired to say some of these things. To continue steadfastly in prayer. That's different than... Uh, he doesn't say, continue, continue mentioning this in prayer from time to time. You know, he, he, he doesn't say, you know, make sure that, that you know, once a week or once a month that you mention this in prayer. The idea of being steadfast in it. That means not being able to be moved. It means diligent. It means continuing and striving. And that's what he says that they should do here. Continuing, continue steadfastly in prayer, being watchful in it with thanksgiving. At the same time, pray also for us that God may open to us a door for the word to declare the mystery of Christ on account of which I am in prison, that I may make it clear which is, which is how I ought to speak. So, Consider the thought that Paul is, is putting forth here. Where, where's Paul as he's asking for this right now? Yeah, prison. All right. Now, I don't know I, I like to, to try to picture some of these situations because sometimes we we tend to look at some Bible characters and put them on a pedestal and say, you know, whether consciously or subconsciously, we mentally say, well, Paul was an apostle or he was inspired and he was this or that and so I can't do some of the same things that he did. And in some some instances that's true. Okay? But Paul still had to make choices. Paul still had to to be self-motivated and to choose that he's going to to offer himself for the cause of Christ. That wasn't something that miraculously came upon him. That's a choice that he made. And so as he's sitting in prison, I mean Imagine yourself in that situation today. And I've, 
I said before in a couple of classes, you know, a couple of classes ago, you know, the prisons today are not like the prisons then. Um, so that's where he is, and his thought there is, pray, f- pray for others and for me for more opportunity to spread the word of God. Why is he in prison right now? For doing that. Yeah, that's right. So he's in prison for that, and he's saying, pray for more opportunity for me to do more of what got me where I am. I mean, just imagine mentally being able to be there, and that's what he's encouraging us to be able to do. Yeah, Rich? It's kind of interesting, back when ISIS was crucifying the Coptic Christians, um, I actually got an opportunity to extend some of our systems so that we were able to actually find them and put a stop to them. <coughs> and that was that was nice, except, you know, I had to put myself in check because I was, took some great satisfaction in watching a few houses go up in this vapor, okay? But that's something I learned a little bit. Mm-hmm. But a second thing was over in the Horn of Africa, kind of a similar situation. You had a lot of people, they were um, an ISIS offshoot. They were, they had a whole bunch of, they, they basically captured a bunch of villagers and they were torturing them and this sort of thing. Systems just like that. And, you know, that they, they were all Christians. <laughs> they were going to murder him. And, and the thing is, is being able to step in and take care of that and at least have, have a hand in doing something about that is, you know, you pray that that can continue is great. Yeah, we, 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 want, we, want to, we want to look for and pray for opportunities that are going to further the cause of Christ, you know, and so that's when we think about situations that are that are going to preserve um, lives of those who are willing to um, go out and spread the word of God. You know, we want to look for opportunities um, and pray for opportunities like that. You know, whenever we can, and and that's that's one of the things that we see Paul doing, and and that's what I'm encouraging you to do is as you think about this whole lesson that we've looked at looking at what Paul prayed for and then trying to do that ourselves and trying to step outside of what we normally think about, you know, praying for, um, you know, praying for deliverance, praying for understanding, praying for service, you know, asking for things that are well beyond ourselves is what we see Paul do often and over and over again. And, and that's encouraging for us to think about. Here in 2 Corinthians, or 2 Thessalonians 1, um, you know, notice what he says here as he's praying for this work to be done and for opportunities that he says, to this end, we always pray for you that our God may make you worthy of his calling and may fulfill every resolve for good and every work of faith by his power so that the name of our Lord Jesus Christ may be glorified in you and you and him according to the grace of our God and the Lord Jesus Christ. Think about what Paul's saying here and what he's praying for, because this is something else that I want you to think about that maybe we don't often pray for. We might ask for opportunities. We might pray for those who are in difficult situations. But look what Paul is asking for here. He says, we always pray for you this way. So this is something that's constantly on his mind. He says that God may make you worthy of his calling and may fulfill every resolve for good and every work of faith by his power. When you think about some of the difficulties that brethren are in throughout the world, you consider the faith that it takes to continue doing what they're asked to do in the face of natural disasters, in the face of persecution, in the face of want and need that, that we just don't experience here right now. Think about the, the faith that it takes to continue to do that and the resolve that it takes to do that. Think about how difficult it could be in those situations, the temptations that, that some may face when they're you know, getting money from places like the United States or getting money from places like us 
it's hard for us to, that's why we're so careful sometimes, it's hard for us to track what's actually happening with that. Think of the temptation there would be for some of those to take that money and do things that they shouldn't be doing with it or use it in ways that they shouldn't be using it for. Think about what Paul is asking for here. He's praying for saints that they would have, that they would be worthy of the calling, they would have the resolve and the faith that they need to do work that glorifies God. And just, you know, I encourage you to stop for some time and think about what it means to be able to do that and how hard that would be sometimes. And Paul's praying for that. So there's, you know, we're, we're, on, we're almost out of time here. There's, there's lots of examples like that where Paul prays for or petitions for, the, for service in, in the way that he wants other saints and other Christians to engage in things that glorify God and spread his kingdom. And so, you know, that kind of wraps up what we have been thinking about in this quarter in, in following the prayers of Paul. And so when you go back and look through the, the lessons, remember how he entreated God, the fervent prayers that he had there, some on his behalf and for others, and how he prayed for understanding, how he prayed with thanksgiving for so many different things, how he prayed, how he petitioned God for, uh, for on others' behalf for so many things. And I encourage you to go back and look at some of the references in these passages and change how you pray to pray like he did and how selfless that was and how much it may have accomplished. And think about what you can accomplish in praying that way as well. Thanks for your comments throughout the classes. Like I said, shortly, either this morning or tonight, there will be material for Stephen Matthew's class next week out there in the foyer, and then we'll start the new quarter on the 31st. Okay? Thanks very much.